Hello, this is Patrick W. Crawford, and this is an update video about the Pro Lighting Skies add-on, which you can get from BlenderGuru.com. So I'm the developer that made the secondary updates to this add-on, and while this is an unofficial video on the add-on's usage, I'm going to basically run through the new features I added in and the new functionalities that you can look forward to if you haven't already found them. So make sure you go to this link and actually download the new version. Otherwise, we will get right to it. So installing the add-on is significantly easier than ever was before. So remember, you always install it as a .zip file. Then when I press install here, you enable it, and you'll notice that A, it tells you what's wrong. So initially, you don't have any HDRs installed, and over here in the window where you usually have the settings, it tells you, hey, nothing's installed, whereas before, it would just appear like it's working even though it wasn't. So you can click here to watch the installation video so it opens in your web browser. But what we really want to do is install from the zip files. So now all you have to do is download the raw zip files from online, select all of them, and then press install. And it tells you a little warning. It's going to take a minute. Um, so essentially what it's doing is what you used to have to do manually, which is unzip all the files and then directly install them, copy paste them into the add-on folder in the Blender files. Like there's no reason a user should have to go through the system files of how blenders work in order to get the add-on to work. So this does it all for you now, which is awesome. So, but again, it's unzipping like almost a gigabyte of files. All right, there you see it worked. There's a tick mark saying all HDRs installed. And you notice that over here in the window, it works. So I'm gonna actually increase the system size a little bit so that it's not the smallest thing in the world. 100 will probably do. All right. And this looks very similar to what you had before. Um, so essentially when I go into render view here, let me actually just select the one of the skies. There we go. So it's it's loading the skies in the back, and that's why I was taking a, a minute there. Uh, but essentially, this is what it looked like before in the previous versions. But now you have these paddles to toggle through and go between the different skies. You have the ability to change categories. So say you only want to look at the sunset, you will only see the sunset here. You also have the ability to favorite skies and favoriting now actually saves the settings of the sky at that moment in time. So for example, if I want to make this a value of two for the sun and 0.1 for the sky, so it's much darker. When I press the favorite button, if I toggle away from that sky and go back to it, it will apply those settings that I had then. And it also appears in the favorites category. The favorite category will only exist once you have created the first favorite sky. And of course, you can add as many different skies as you want, and it will always save the settings of the according sky when you press favorites. Go back here, then you see those three are there, and it saved the settings that I set there, so 10, 1, etc. So another big update to uh, the 1.1.1 version is the addition of the horizon level advanced setting. So lots of people, when they were having uh, basically a scene in Blender, and they were like, you know, putting in whatever a square here, putting some sort of subject, and they had the camera set up looking in this direction. They're complaining that the horizon was always there. You had this like black level. And the first version, or the first update, you know, introduced the mirror effect, but sometimes the skies would still have this black horizon level there, and it's actually technically unrealistic to have a sky emitting light from the bottom. So those settings are still there, and you still have the ability to, you know, change the background color to whatever you want but we've added a new setting called horizon level. And this will solve a lot of the issues about having to mirror the sky, which you can still do if you want. But essentially, well, it is what it sounds like. It's gonna adjust the horizon level, bringing it down a little bit, such as like that. And so however you position your camera, you can adjust it more, adjust it less. It typically only makes sense to move it into the negative area, but you can do you know, way up if you wanted or way down. And this does work in conjunction with mirroring. So I can put mirroring to full, the mirror will only go up to the level of the mirror horizon, but if I move it downwards to a very negative value for the horizon level at the top, uh, you see it does still work. It still has the mirroring effect down there going on. So that's awesome. Um, in addition to that, other you know features that were new to the 1.1 update included the ability to adjust the background color or the actual color of the sky as well as the color of the lighting that it emits. So for example, here I can make the background have a more you know, darker blue color, whatever it may be. 
uh, but then I can also adjust the lighting independently. You know, so typically you would maybe want to make them the same, depends on what you want to do, um, but you could also make it very different. So then the actual lighting, the light that the objects are receiving could be a very different color from the hue you're basically applying to the sky. So that's a nice feature there. And of course you can also adjust the saturation as you would anywhere else. And that's all nice and dandy. Um, one thing that you know some people may try and do is to you know animate these features like the rotation. I could you know plausibly you would want to animate this sort of feature, um, but with the way the add-on set up, it will not work directly. Before users are saying, oh, why is it not working? Well, now when you put in a keyframe, it tells you what's going on, saying you know you can't add a keyframe here. You have to keyframe the world node group directly. What does that mean? Uh, well, essentially, there's nothing that magical about the setup of the ProLighting Skies. It's just a node group. So I'm going to clear the keyframe there. The, uh, the warning will go away. Then I'm going to go over to the node editor, then the world node shader group. And you see here, this is the add-on. This is what the add-on does. It creates and sets up this node group and you know modifies other properties. So if you want to, like for example, animate the rotation of the sky, what you'd really have to do is animate it here in the node group. And that's a separate property from what the um, this button down here is. So if you want to animate the rotation of the sky, then you would basically, you know, change it there, you know, rotate, you know, add another keyframe, or rotate over time. And that's true for all the properties. So just be aware of that. Uh, otherwise, a uh, big feature obviously includes being able to install your own HDRs. So if you go back to the add-on, go down here, you have the ability to, there's another section for install custom HDR. So this is a huge feature available for the light and ultimate versions that you know basically enables you to use other HDR sets such as from the Siebel library or however you say it. So an example of that, when you open this up, then again, I will navigate to wherever I have these things. So for example, I have a folder here, I have them custom. I have a few different sets here. So you notice that um, it's only looking for files that have underscore thumb.jpg. If I select all those, it will attempt to install all of those individual files. So now I have, in addition to the all sky setting, it will you know add them to the end there once all the skies load again. Um, but I can more directly go to the custom, the custom uh, category here, and you'll see it has all four of those skies there, which is nice and wonderful. Uh, typically, these skies will not work as well with the mirroring features. That's why it looks odd here, or the horizon level for that matter. So I'm going to reset settings uh, just to clear that out. And you can kind of see that it looks great. That's the background sky. And again, like anything else, I can toggle through. Do, 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 do. Now we're inside a stairwell. That's amazing. And yeah, so essentially you can use HDRs from anywhere. Uh, but you know, you just have to have the right file. So you have to have, in addition to a you know JPEG file, which is the direct background here, you have to have either a .hdr file or a .exr file for the lighting. And the instructions here do very clearly you know, explain the setup of what that has to look like. So just be aware of that. Otherwise, that is the extent of this short demo. So I hope a lot of people you know, enjoy this new update, that these features are useful and make your scenes look better. That's all for now. Thanks so much.